Hello, this is Shane Gibson with RackN, and we are going to be doing a demonstration walkthrough of RackN's bootstrapping data centers in an example of what we've coined as our continuously integrated data center model and capability, utilizing the RackN digital rebar platform and highlighting deployment of VMware ESXi uh, Cloud Foundations VCF integration. This process is going to use what we refer to as universal workflow. And universal workflow is a workflow that allows you to do zero touch cluster installation in a matter of minutes that drives machines across a very vast array of processes and capabilities and ties together a lot of the components of content and plugins that the Rackin Digital Rebar platform provides. And this starts with being able to dynamically discover hardware. So machines that are unknown to the system as they are pixie booted will be discovered. Part of that discovery process will include a deep inventory scan of the um, system's information, RAID configuration, BIOS information, firmware versions, LDP packets will be used to discover the network switch ports and switches that the hosts are connected to. And using that inventory information, we will take that in conjunction with our ability to connect to infrastructure services to be able to classify the hardware and decide what to, to do with it as we drive the machine through this universal workflow. We can also do validation of the hardware components. So you can verify things like, is the SKU of this hardware accurate and fully present and accounted for? For example, did some of the dim memory modules get unseated and you're now missing half of your memory banks? That would not be good as a simple example. We can do deep BIOS configuration of the platform. And that BIOS configuration allows you to manage all of the assets of the BIOS and the baseboard management controller as well as several patterns for installing and enforcing firmware versions are installed on the platform. In addition to that, we'll be able to do hardware RAID configuration. And then based on that previous classify step, we're going to do an ESXi installation. And the pattern that we're going to demonstrate today is installing ESXi 670U2 with the appropriate patch sets and patch reboots necessary to be VCF381 compliant. We'll also do a relatively deep configuration of the ES, ESXi operating system and make the machines ready for the VCF cluster build process. Today, we aren't directly integrating with the builder or the bootstrap uh, JSON process, but we have a number of patterns coming uh, in our roadmap to do that integration much more cleanly down the road. And throughout this process, we can do a lot of uh, validation of the ESXi environment and verify that the settings that we're are setting are indeed correct. Simple examples of that include setting the network, uh, net mask, and default gateway. Those three values should all resolve to the same subnet. Otherwise, ESXi won't be able to connect to the network appropriately. So these are some examples of some validations that we can do throughout the build process to make sure things are occurring the way they should. This zero to cluster build process uh, typically takes anywhere from really a few minutes to 60 minutes, depending on how much of BIOS firmware RAID and operating system installation and patching is required. But essentially, it starts with the, the bootstrap of the bare metal servers. We uh, have deep integration support for HPE, Dell, and Lenovo servers. Uh, we also support other hardware vendors uh, as well. Uh, for uh, basic BIOS or basic boot control, uh, Pixie Next Boot and disk boot options. After that, we will perform an inventory classify and validate process on these machines. That's basically figuring out information about the machines. We'll do some of the hardware lifecycle management, the BIOS, the firmware RAID configuration. We'll install an operating system and network configuration. In our example use case today, it'll be VMware ESXi 670U2. And in this case, uh, the application down the road is essentially a clustered VCF configuration. Part of this process will allow you to integrate with your existing infrastructure at various points in the workflow process. You can make callouts to our 
through our callback module to other RESTful API services. We're not going to demonstrate any of those capabilities today since we don't have any of those RESTful uh, external API services up and running to integrate with, but those are capabilities as part of the universal workflow. And finally, the build cluster orchestration pieces where we hand over the control to allow uh, VCF to bootstrap all of these machines into a VCF private cloud cluster. All of this is performed with the rack end platforms end-to-end -end automation capability using that universal workflow solution. In this process, we're going to be driving the universal work through through a two-step workflow stage. The main workflow that we'll execute uh, does mostly hardware lifecycle and preparation of the machine. And that's a 20-stage step process that we call universal discover hardware. That process will start at the beginning and run through. And then it's going to hit this process in the state or stage in the process we call the next step. And the next step will dynamically select the next thing to do, in this case, select an ESXi install workflow, which will then be kicked off at that stage within the previous workflow and will drive uh, subsequently through a deep workflow uh, capability to do the configuration of the ESX platform environment in place. And it runs through its process of being able to do that. So these are the two primary workflows we're going to demonstrate in this case. In this next section, we're going to show the 25 minutes of universal workflow compressed over a 96 second period of time, and it'll flash by really fast. In this 90 second compressed view, we will see machines join in. They were previously unknown to the platform, and we will go through our discovery process, and then we'll drive them through that full universal workflow, which also includes the inventory, classification, validation, BIOS, firmware, RAID, communicate with external services. We will then select ESXi 670U2. We will install the ESXi 670U2 operating system. And then we'll apply appropriate patches for VCF381 HCL compliance and do more validation tasks. It's important to understand that the universal workflow is just one of many workflow capabilities of the platform. You can dynamically choose to compose workflows that can do any number of things from operating system installations to hardware lifecycle. And there we have it, the system's completing up successfully. In addition to deploying individual ESXi instances, the Racken solution provides a multi-site manager capability that provides a single pane of glass to operate and manage all of the infrastructure across your global footprint or multiple data center footprint or even multiple DRP endpoint footprint within a single data center. It doesn't necessarily have to be a global footprint. In this case, we have a, a very simple example of two U.S. data centers, U.S. 1 and U.S. 2, and a European data center called EU 3. These three data centers are running a local DRP endpoint in the local site that manages the physical infrastructure in that local site. But in addition to that, we can tie into uh, that process a regional manager, uh, which would have access to administer the US 1 and US 2 sites. So that would be the US region. When you point your API, CLI, or portal at the regional manager in this process, you have regional control over those US sites and all of the assets within those sites. If you point your API CLI or portal at your global manager, you now have that single pane of glass view across all of your infrastructure, including the regional manager and the three remote sites that are managed by those additional DRP endpoints. This process gives you a true federated control. So you maintain local control of those environments and you also maintain control from a global standpoint as well. If your local site is disconnected due to a network interruption or even planned outage, you can still have full control of your local site. The global uh, multi-site manager capability provides you this ability to manage both uh, local uh, enterprise data center scale environments where you have a small subset of sites with thousands or tens of thousands of physical machines or edge deployment environments 
where you may have thousands of remote sites with a small handful of machines. This platform solution is designed to address both of those use cases and perform equally well across all of them. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna show, um, and maybe the most interesting and exciting thing to show is our multi-site manager. And our multi-site manager allows us the ability to treat the DRP endpoints. And we refer to a DRP endpoint uh, as this service or the daemon or the, the process or the platform that implements the digital rebar platform. We simply refer to that as an endpoint. So in this case, the DRP uh, manager is a plugin to the DRP platform that extends the capability of a platform to become a manager. Not all DRP endpoints have to be specified as a manager. And again, if you recall from the slide deck, I mentioned that the uh, control plane model is a federated model. It's not a hierarchical model. Although very often we will describe and draw the relationship between a global manager, regional managers, local managers, maybe rack level controllers or managers uh, in a hierarchical fashion, it doesn't necessarily have to be described or configured that way. Uh, it is a true federated control plane. In this example, I've spun up a series of machines that are operating as DRP endpoints, and we have four of them here. And we've named them, hopefully, uh, in a capacity that will generally make sense, US East, US West, US Southeast, and US Central. This uh, quote-unquote bootstrap machine is a special machine that allows us to run uh, additional actions on the side of the DRP endpoint against other infrastructure. In this case, we're using the bootstrap uh, machine object or context to be able to fire up infrastructure and remote clouds through uh, Terraform. It's a pretty interesting uh, thing on its own, but ultimately it gives us the ability uh, to be able to execute uh, commands against various infrastructure, so anything that you can run uh, inside of a container and wrap it up in a little container to be able to integrate with an API or execute a CLI of some sort or drop a binary in there and run it, we're able to uh, operate with as part of the workflow process. Getting over to the manager, though, if we take a look at the catalog, um, we are running on, uh, I should mention, we're running on this thing called the Racken Manager Dash Demo. That's the name of this endpoint. And this endpoint is the global manager that is going to be responsible for managing these four uh, individual endpoints and enforcing the configuration of those endpoints as well as the content and plugins that are on them that are available for installation in their local sites. This gives you a true single pane of glass control over your infrastructure and the ability to push down configurations and manage uh, thousands of DRP endpoints through an infrastructure as code programmatic API way uh, that is integrated with the DRP workflow system and capability. It's a very powerful solution. But to implement that, what's required is the uh, multi-site manager plugin. So we have that installed here. That plugin is what enables this capability. And that was spun up as part of the demo with the installation. Uh, if we take a look at the endpoints, uh, the endpoints is our menu where we manage um, how we're going to apply configuration to these machines. So in this case, you'll see that we have uh, the global demo itself, the rack and manager demo, and then our four endpoints, which we've already enrolled their uh, credentials to manage and administer them. So the process is very simple. You start the install script and, and provide essentially a naked or an empty DRP endpoint, and then you take the manager and point it at that endpoint's uh, API port and give it the appropriate username password credentials to enroll it, and now we push configurations down to it. This process is done through uh, what we refer to as version sets. Version sets can be constructed in any name uh, or manner or fashion that you want that can relate to things like workflows, stages, tasks, parameters, profiles, as well as configuration elements of the DRP endpoints themselves. You can break these up in any order that makes sense to them. You can put them all in one uh, version set if you want. Uh, but in this case, we've had them broken down into a couple of basic points. We have credential and license, which allows us to authenticate across these clusters and provide 
uh, actions on behalf of other endpoints with the same authentication tokens. Uh, we also have, uh, in this case, we have some special version sets that in, uh, interact with the global manager themselves. And in addition to that, we have a couple of uh, uh, version sets here that describe the base content that will be installed on the machine. We can either choose to install all of the versions that are marked stable currently, all of the versions that are marked tip, or we can highlight exactly what versions we want. In this case, we have specified version 411 or version 412 as version sets on the platform for version configuration enforcement. If we come back to our endpoints, we can take a look at them briefly, and we see uh, in this example a, a set of version sets. So we have on uh, US Central, we have the license, we have credential, and we have site-based uh, 411. And what we're going to do actually is, uh, uh, let's just do this on one of them. Uh, we currently have on US West, we have uh, site-based 412. However, we're missing uh, credential and license, which should be on the system. And so we're gonna add those to the machine. Since this column here, uh, the third column says play, that says I'm going to apply these actions immediately as I apply it. And you'll see there's a set of actions. If you watch that quickly enough, you saw there was a green icon there. And that icon then flashed away as it applied the configuration. We look at the version set column and we see we have the version sets now all in alignment on these. We're going to pause the endpoint so the actions don't happen immediately. Uh, we're going to click on the site base 411 remove that from the endpoint, and then put site base 412 on the endpoint. And as we do that, it's going to need to drive the machine through a series of actions to achieve that end state, to upgrade from 411 to 412. We're going to start the set of actions, and so now this endpoint is going to go through the process of enforcing the configuration. It has to download a couple hundred megabyte in the background, and that process is a little slow through the network connections on these um, nodes. So it'll take a couple minutes. What I'll do is show you how enforcement of this works. So in this case, we've configured a specific amount of uh, content that should be on the system, on all of these systems. So US Central, if we uh, jump to the uh, manager uh, in, uh, interface on this system, we log into it. We haven't logged into it yet, so we have to accept the self-signed cert. You can install your own certs. But in this case, we go and take a look at it. There are no machine objects under control on this uh, endpoint yet, um, and it's just an endpoint with some configuration. So if we look at the catalog, we'll see that we have a bunch of installed content here. This is the content that's enforced by the version set. And if we take a look at this list, uh, what we're going to do is add to this list. And so we're going to take and add the FlexiFlow uh, content pack. And the multi-site manager, when we install this, will recognize that this is not appropriate for the version set, and then it'll subsequently remove it really quickly. But as we can see, we have on this uh, environment, it's not installed. We're going to install it. It's going to go through the up. Uh, install process, and if I jump back over here and refresh fast enough, we'll see there's an action that pops up over here that's going to have to happen on the machine. And that action is a remove action because that content's not supposed to be on the machine. Jumping back over to this US Central machine again, we look at our installed content list, we see that the FlexiFlow piece has been removed from the configuration. So the manager has done its job to enforce the configuration. Uh, the last piece, we've got all of these endpoints now. Uh, well, we don't have all of them up to 412, but what we'll do is show you a very brief uh, interaction of controlling these endpoints. Uh, we looked at the US Central, and if you recall, when we looked at the machines list, there were no machines in that. However, we're going to uh, add some machines to that. So we're gonna add a uh, profile that just to find some information we need on the system. And we're going to then jump over here and do a site expand uh, workflow operation. And this is an operational workflow that will spin up a whole bunch of more uh, machines 
under control of this individual manager. So it's going to run through this process to spin up new machine resources in the back end. And if we come over to this, uh, we're back on the US Central here. If we come over to the machine objects, we'll see that we don't have any of the machines listed in here yet. Um, but as they are spinning up in the background, uh, they will come under management of this machine in just a moment. And these are local machine assets that will be uh, locally configurable, locally manageable, based on the content installed and configuration of this DRP endpoint as enforced by the manager. But the local machine resources uh, reside here and we can control them and drive them through prescribed workflows that are available to us through the manager's content uh, subsystem. Uh, these machines are just about done spinning up and we should start to see them uh, uh, coming into the system. And there we go. We have three machines that have been spun up and they are booting into their initial discovery workflow, uh, which we've called Discover Linode, and they've finished that workflow process. We're going to jump back over to the global manager now, and we see that global manager has uh, re recognized that there's a refresh required. If we refresh that, we can see that we now have uh, these three machines that have been uh, registered. And at the end of the day, these three machines are actually managed locally on that uh, U.S. central uh, endpoint. At this point, we can choose to drive these machines through uh, an additional workflow. And, and what happens is the API requests are pushed down uh, to the uh, endpoint that's responsible for managing these and then executed locally to uh, create uh, the appropriate action. So in this case, we can do, uh, we'll do a simple uh, Kubernetes K3S cluster uh, install and we'll kick those machines off and you can see that their workflow has started flowing and doing things. We're on the rack and manager demo. We're going to jump over here uh, to the U.S. central endpoint and we see the same set of actions being executed and, and run in place here. Now, we've gotten an error probably because I, I didn't do something right. I, I tend to do that. Uh, but we can take a look at uh, the machine object and figure out what's broken on the machine uh, at this point. Uh, sorry, we can look at the task that broke. So in this case, the task failed. Uh, we would want to then take a look at what happened and why the task failed. But ultimately, we're demonstrating the control, uh, local control of these machines under the control of the global manager, but also under control of the, the uh, local endpoint that's responsible for managing it. That's it. That concludes the multi-site manager and uh, the previous walkthrough of the universal workflow as it applies to VMware ESXi and VCF381 uh, specification. Uh, thank you very much. appreciate your time. Again, that was Shane Gibson with RackN. Check us out on the web at httpsrackn.com. Thank you very much.